everyone, Ted Jacks here. Uh, this video is a package creation video. What we're gonna do is create a package for that Google Chrome Enterprise MSI that we downloaded when we wanted to actually uh, import our ADMX into our Google policy so that we can actually implement this in our environment and actually manage a Google Chrome as a primary browser in a enterprise environment and make sure that we have the security and configurations um, as a, a core component of that particular setup. Uh, so here we have the Google Chrome standalone enterprise MSI downloaded already to the host machine. And what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and copy that up to our VMware workstation um, to our host uh, our virtual machine. And while that's copying over, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is go back to our previous um, setup in our group policy. And as you can um, see, uh, if we go to our edit, um, and our policies and our administrative, we have um, a configuration template now that we can actually manage Google policy when it comes to Google Chrome. So now that we're actually able to manage Google Chrome in our environment and set group policy for it and be able to make sure that it's secure and that we're actually going to implement it in a way that makes it a viable uh, enterprise level browser for us, uh, we can go ahead and actually deploy the actual MSI to machines in our network. Um, so now we actually have our content, our MSI file, and what we're going to do is make sure we um, place this in our software folder. Uh, so again, um, if we're going to use the UNC path or uh, you had it mapped uh, already, uh, all you would do is navigate to your actual uh, sources uh, destination where you put all your uh, packaging content. Um, in our case, it's on our uh, it's on the D drive of this server. Um, if we were going to actually navigate to it using the network uh, UNC path, then it would be a different um, address altogether. It's really not even that important um, in this particular scenario because we know and we've done some videos before. Uh, but for those who might not know and might not have those drives already mapped or those drives already on a different server, then you have to make sure that you know where your actual shared drive is for your actual software that you're going to package up and, just, and uh, you know, um, deploy out to your environment. So in our software folder, what we're going to go ahead and do is create another folder for Google Chrome. And in that folder, we're going to go ahead and um, cut, cut over our MSI file so that when we create our package, we can point it to this destination location. So we're going to go ahead and open up our configuration manager and go to our software library and open up application management and go to our packages. So we're going to just right click on packages and we're going to go ahead and create a new package. And once that comes up, what we're going to go ahead and do is just set some basic switches for it. Um, go through the process of actually setting up a package so that you guys can see uh, that it doesn't and it hasn't really changed at, um, at all. And it actually is a lot easier than what it was for 2007 in case that's what your experience is in. So with the package widget, we're going to go ahead and do some basic, you know, uh, denominations for name. Google in court, right? And we're going to go ahead and set the language and the version. I think it's like 32 points something. Let's just theoretically say that it's 32. So uh, I don't have to go actually find that long uh, version number. And we're going to go ahead and browse to where our actual content is located. So again, on our particular server, uh, it's the CM01. Uh, it's the sources folder shared. And we're going to go to our software folder navigate down to our Google Chrome folder and in this particular folder that's where our source uh, MSI file is located so we're good with that actual path we're going to create a standard program um, we're not creating a program for a device and um, it's not needed in this particular case and this is going to be the name of how the program is going to show up in our uh, software scenario when we deploy it so let's just say Google Chrome and here's uh, where we're going to actually uh, implement our command line argument. So, of course, when we do MSIs, we do MSI exact.exe. 
4 slash I and I'm actually going to cut this so that I can actually make sure that the browser has um, the actual MSI file already targeted. So there's our MSI file. I'm going to go ahead and paste back my argument. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that this is a quiet install. And we're going to leave it to run uh, normal. And only when a user is logged in, actually, uh, what you could do is set it so that it's it installs whether the user is logged in or not. So if a user is uh, at the login screen or at the lock screen, it will install for them. And since we will be deploying this to all systems then, uh, we want to make sure that there aren't extra variables that's going to prevent this from installing in a timely fashion. So we're going to have it install whether the user is logged in or not. Um, we are going to allow the users to view. No, no, we're not. We're not going to allow the users uh, to interact with this program as it installs. Uh, that's where this setting is. Uh, but we are going to allow the user to actually be able to uh, install the program on their own via the software center. And that comes a little bit later in this wizard. In case we needed to run any other application, say that we had a, like a, a VB script or a reg file and we wanted to actually start changing uh, some registry, um, um, then we would actually be able to do that by running another program first and then we would just uh, pick that particular package in that application and have that run before it would run what we just created. And this program, um, we're going to say that we're going to be in a Windows 7 environment. So we can go ahead and say that we only want this to install on machines that are at least Windows 7, 64-bit. Because in our domain, we're going to be on 64-bit uh, Windows 7 systems, uh, Windows 8 systems eventually as well. Uh, but for the sake of this particular demonstration, we're going to assume that we're all on Windows 7, 64-bit. Um, and you don't have to set that in um to have it install up on Windows 7, but just for specificity's sake, we're going to go ahead and set that um, now. And usually I, I like to actually set um, a reasonable time for this in case there is some issues with this. You don't want this hanging up in the background and returning a code after uh, two hours. Um, in most scenarios, uh, Google Chrome should be able to install, I would say, in less than 10 minutes. Uh, so I'd probably set 20 minutes just to make sure that if there is something wrong, that it's not in the background eating up resources and I can get the code uh, and, and know immediately or a lot faster whether or not there's an issue with the actual uh, package. So here we're going to confirm our settings. It's going to go ahead and work and, and, and build the package up for us. And then we're going to go ahead and close that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down this window here so we can see a little bit more about what we have. Um, and again, the first thing that you do when you create packages, task sequences, and all those things is make sure you distribute the content to the distribution point. So I'm going to go ahead and right click this and make sure that I distribute the content. And we're going to go ahead and pick our uh, default distribution point since we only have one server and that server is our actual distribution point and this content will start to copy over in a, a format that's uh, made for distribution packaging and we're going to go ahead and do a refresh real quick so you guys can see that the content status should be showing up as yellow actually it's not um, it went ahead and moved pretty fast because again, we have one server and it's the same server that we're working from. So it already went ahead and distributed the content to the distribution point. So what we need to do here, uh, now is go ahead and make sure that we have a collection for Google Chrome. And we're just gonna go ahead and, and right click on our software folder and create a folder called Google Chrome. We're going to limit this collection uh, to all systems. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a machine to it right now. And I'm going to do a direct rule. And I'm going to add the machine name CC. Name string CC is it because the way I typed it out? No. So we're not going to name the name. We're not going to add the name CC. We're going to go ahead and add that later. 
I don't know why that's giving me that right now. Um, so we're not even going to worry about that. We're just going to go ahead and add it because it's already in our devices. But it doesn't have the nickname. Uh, as you can see, the actual nickname of the virtual machine tab is CC, but the actual p machine name is Celia PC. Uh, so that's my fault. Uh, it's been a while since I actually logged into this um, actual machine. We already have Google Chrome installed on this machine. So um, let's go ahead and uninstall this in the background. I should have had this ready. Hey, sometimes, you know, you try to do these videos and, you know, you get a little bit ahead of yourself. Uh, so once this refreshes and we're able to move, remove the Google Chrome that's already installed, we're going to go back over here and make sure that we add the Celia machine to that device collection that we just created. So we're going to go ahead and go to our software. We're going to go to Google Chrome. We're going to add that. Let's go ahead and check on our remove, our uninstall. And it's moving along very, very slowly. We need to get a six core processor. I've been putting it off. I have an i5 2500K uh, that I got like wow, at least three, four years ago, um, back when they first came out, the second generation Sandy Bridges for my gaming. And it's it it was it sufficed, especially when it comes to gaming, because when it comes to gaming, especially i fives and Intel processors, uh, you pretty much want to max out the amount of frames that you can benefit from just by using those types of uh, processors. And I was fine with that, so I didn't have a need to move up to the third generation Ivy Bridge or the ha uh, Haswell and. Now, now that I'm getting into video editing and to, into more things that actually demand a pretty good uh, CPU, I'm starting to see now that I'm having a little bit of slowdown and slowness when it comes to running all my, um, you know, my software at the same time. I mean, I do have uh, 32 gigs of RAM, um, and as you can see, I'll go ahead and show you guys a little bit of my performance. Um, I have 32 gigs of RAM, and usually when I run my virtual machines and all that stuff, I can pretty much eat up a lot of that. I can actually get within uh, maxing that pretty close, which is kind of insane. Um, but the CPU is definitely getting taxed now, and I'm thinking about getting that six-core uh, processor that Intel has. Um, and... You know, hopefully, you know, it's going to be able to help me out when it comes to doing these videos and, and doing my encoding. Uh, but uh, let, to go ahead and get back to actually doing this a little bit faster, we remove Google Chrome. Let's go ahead and verify. We got the shortcut still here. We can go ahead and remove that. Okay, we can confirm that we don't have any Google Chrome installed. We got Google Talk, but not Google Chrome. Now we just need to go ahead and deploy this actual uh, software to that machine. So we're going to go to our package. We're going to go to deploy and we're going to select the collection that we created. And we're going to set some, uh, some requirements so that it installs uh, automatically as soon as possible. So again, our, uh, our distribution point is already selected. We can just click next there. We're going to make this a required install. We're going to set the uh, assignment to install as soon as possible. Rerun at the fail uh, attempt. And this is the setting that I was talking about earlier. Um, we're going to allow the users to run this program independently. So in case they ever lose it or if they uninstall it for whatever reason, it will show up in the software center and they'll be able to click it and install on their own. Um, if we were going to do maintenance windows and all that stuff, this would allow us uh, these options here to uh, force the system to reboot if a reboot was necessary. So again, we're going to make sure that we select download content from the distribution point and run locally for each setting that we have. And we're going to also allow the uh, users to share this content with other users on the same subnet and a uh, like a branch cache um, type of uh, thing, you know, with uh, Microsoft now um, and branch caching when it came to 2008 release two and up. Um, it allows for uh, machines that are on the same subnet to actually share information with each other and 
it's pretty cool, you know, actually. Um, a lot of organizations don't really use it right now, um, but it actually does help when it comes to making sure you're not taxing one particular server. If uh, you're in a remote office and 10 people already have the program, then you can get it from them on your subnet. So we're gonna get, go ahead and click Next, click Closed, and Okay, so we're gonna go back to our CC machine and we're gonna do some um, policy retrievals so that we can force the content to go ahead and start installing for us. Uh, so again, we're gonna go to our configuration manager client and the control panel. We're gonna to go to our actions. We're gonna run our machine policy retrieval and evaluation cycle. And then we're gonna open up our software sensor to see if our software is pulling down. So as you can see, our software is preparing to download. It's going to go ahead and pull down and hopefully it's going to run the MSI using the command line switches, uh, switches that we gave and we're going to have a successful install. Hopefully it works. And then we can work on a, um, a video to actually see if we can actually set some group policy and set the default home page and see if we can restrict some things and actually be able to, you know, uh, administer this in a, a domain, uh, you know, environment. So the program is installing. We can check the logs, see how it's going. Hopefully I can get to the logs uh, uh, fast enough to catch some of the data. Uh, I should have had CM Trace installed on here. But it's fine, trust me, I'll be making a lot of videos when it comes to all this stuff and you guys will be able to see in great detail exactly everything that goes on. Now we're gonna to go to the execution manager. I like the word wrap, the notepad um, version of this stuff if I'm not using CM Trace. And we can see that our Google Chrome standalone enterprise MSI downloaded into the CCM cache folder properly and that it ran the command prompt here that we set for it to do a quiet install. And our program is currently installing and, and Google does install, I mean, especially if you try to just download and install it, you, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are familiar with it. Um, it only installs like a download manager, then it does an install where it connects to the server and it goes through the process for you and you don't even really know when it's installed. It just pops up or just says that it's installed and thank you. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and, and, and watch our log uh, continue to parse data. And we're going to go ahead and check to see if, nope, it's not done yet. Not done yet. That circle is spinning slow, then fast, slow, then fast. And if we ever had issues with this, and there are tons of ways to figure out what's going on, that's going on wrong. Uh, we got a successful install, took long enough. Uh, but this is what happens when you do things live and your system needs to be upgraded a little bit. Uh, but there you go. You have Google Chrome installed via the package that we just created for it. And maybe via our group policy, we can go ahead and, and set it to be our default upon uh, installation. Uh, so look for for that video coming out. Um, this is Tech Jax. See you.